Narrative writing involves a storytelling atmosphere in which you have characters involved in the story and you also have a setting which is the location of the story. A lot of narrative writing involves sensory words so that the reader can picture what's happening, where it's taking place. We're going to connect narrative writing with the scientific method and I want to share with you a student sample so that you have an idea of what you're being asked to do for your assignment. The scientific method steps are, there's six of them. The first one is make an observation, then you ask a question, formulate a hypothesis, test your hypothesis, draw conclusions, and communicate results. These are need to be included in your narrative and here's how you can do it. I want to share with you a student sample. The first thing I want you to notice is the layout of the paper. This is called MLA format. It's used by the majority of colleges, so if your instructor is asking you to turn in your papers in MLA format, they're preparing you for the next step. As you can see, the font is Times New Roman. It is 12 size and everything is double spaced. You can click on line spacing here and check double to double space your papers. There's also a heading up here with a running page number total. So how to do that is click on insert and then click page number and then the first box here. That will put a page number on the top of each of your pages in order of one, two, three, four, etc. Once you have that number, you can go in front of the number and put your last name. Your last name goes here. Over here is the heading. Your first and last name goes here. This just says a student because I wanted to protect student privacy. Here is your instructor's name. Here is the title of the class and the date. It goes day, month, year. The title of your story goes in the middle. I'm not going to read this story to you. I'm hoping you have already read it in class or individually. If you have not, push pause on this video and read the story. Then we'll continue if you have. Alright, so this story starts by introducing the topic. We have here the author. She paints us a picture of what she wants to accomplish. And she wants to grow these garden fresh beefsteak tomatoes that are as big as baseballs because it reminds her of her mom when she was little. It reminds her of her childhood and the taste. And no matter how many she buys in the grocery store, they just don't compare. So she is set out to create her own garden at her house and grow her beefsteak tomatoes. But what she notices, the observation that she makes, is that her tomatoes are puny and taste terrible. So in this first paragraph, we are introduced to the topic and we already have made an observation, which is step one of the scientific method. We have also learned a little bit about the character. She's nostalgic for her mom's garden. Uh, she is faithfully and patiently tending to this garden. So it gives you kind of a perspective into her personality without really jumping out and saying things. So those are picking up on context clues. Second paragraph, the author asks a couple questions. She's made the observation that her tomatoes are puny and gross, and so she's wondering why. Some of the questions that she asks is, is it the soil? Is it the weather? Is there some kind of insect or terrible animal causing this problem? And so here she has completed step two of the scientific method. She has asked a question. She figures from that, so she makes an educated guess or an hypothesis that maybe it's the fertilizer. So she makes an if-then because hypothesis statement. I'm going to read this sentence to you. I hypothesize that if I added some fertilizer to the soil, then my tomato plants would grow healthy because they were lacking special nutrients. By making this hypothesis, she has completed step three of form a hypothesis. Now she will test the hypothesis with an experiment. So what she does is she gets a cup of organic steer manure and she places it around each tomato plant and then she monitors the leaf color and height for a week straight. I would like to put a note in here that when you monitor the leaf color, 
that's qualitative data because you're making sort of an observation about the way it looks. She could even monitor the way the leaf, um, if it shrivels or if it's big and broad. And then she also measures the height for a week straight and that is quantitative data because it deals with numbers. So just thought I'd put that in there. She's testing it, but what she finds out when she analyzes all the data in step five is that her tomato plants are doing just as bad as they were before the organic steer manure. So her hypothesis ends up not working out. She said, hey, I thought this was gonna happen. She did her experiment. It didn't happen. That's okay. Your hypothesis doesn't need to be correct. The way that you go about proving or disproving your hypothesis is the main idea of the scientific method. So she doesn't understand what's going on. She calls her mom, her, you know, hoping her mom has some answers, and her mom basically says, ah, guess you're just cursed. <laughs> Through that one little sentence, you kind of get an, a, an idea of the character of her mother, right? If she had called her mom and her mom had given her advice on do this, this, and this, that would have been different than her mom just saying, eh, didn't work out for you, sorry, sweetie. So we move on to the rest of the story. She has communicated her results, but she's not going to give up because, doggone it, she wants these tomatoes. So then she tries some other stuff, and I'm not going to give you the rest of the story because hopefully you've already read it. But the rest of the story gives some more insight to her as a character. It talks about how she analyzes and how she continues to monitor and ask questions, and she kind of picks up on these little clues. It also introduces two other characters, her husband and her son, and so it also provides more information on where this is taking place. You realize that she's in a house with a backyard, and she has a door that leads to the outside. So through all of this writing, you have not only accomplished narrative with an introduction, a setting, a plot, which is a series of events, characters, and a conclusion, but you've also covered the scientific method in all six steps. I hope this gives you an idea of what um, you're looking for in your assignment, and I encourage you to be creative and think about something that you have done in your life that has applied the scientific method to it. Have fun.